Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of making Bender the real walking, talking robot. This project is built on top of my Robot X series and you should check that out on my channel. This is for the walking leg assembly for these robot projects. Uh, which really does walk along. At the moment it's on hold waiting for some more motors because the ones I had in there were made of uh, drill motors with lead screws in the chucks and those have started to break so I've got something proper on the way but it's not here yet so in the meantime I'm building the cosmetic so Bender and the plan is to build different robotic characters on top of this based on an audience vote and Bender seems the ideal choice to start with because it's a very easy one because it covers the robot and after that we can do transformers and terminators and all sorts of things so if you've got any suggestions leave those in the comments below Last time I made Bender's animatronic head, his eyes move, his mouth moves, he's illuminated from the inside, there's still a few details to do, obviously it's not finished, it all needs sanding down and painting, but today we're going to make Bender's arms and we're going to skin up his body. I'm going to skin up my lobster pot with a load of foam that I've got here and this is 6mm LD45 foam. The plan is to make back and front skins in two halves which join under the arms and the front one of course needs the door in so I can make the template for the back, the front should be identical and we can cut the door in and make the structure that holds it. Just planning the front door here, so I've got bits of frame that will hold it in a curve. There's two more sticks just printing now, so we need to cut that out a suitable size. And then we can uh, skin up the front here. Alright, there's my door panel. I still need to uh, stick the frame on the back of that, but we're all skinned up. So there's a few gaps and things which I'm going to fill in. But I also need to uh, make provision for the arms. So I've uh, 3D printed this, which is one of the shoulder hubs. And this again was printed on the Moore Struder on the Lolzbot Taz in a 0.8mm layer height. With its 1.2mm nozzle, it's a PLA part. It's only a single wall again, but it's incredibly tough. So that's got um, a thing here that fits onto one of the uh, beams on the inside. So I'm going to cut a hole and make sure that fits on each side, wherever it goes there, in fact. Got another one printing, and then we'll glue that in, and then we can start sealing this and painting it. There's one fitted in the hole. I need to glue that in. You can just about see a nut maybe in there somewhere. There's a... Uh, some metal nuts and those are actually clamped onto aluminium so this plastic frame is what the animatronic arm is going to be fitted to and this piece is just for show. I'm using this flexible filler to fill in um, any gaps in the foam here so it's going to be sealed over anyway and it's not necessarily need to be flexible so we could use anything but um, it'll help if it's flexible if it gets a knock so it doesn't all crack and so on so I'm just going to smear that over any seam lines. I've been pretty good with my foam building I think there's a few rough patches but uh, that'll just help so we don't see those seams in the lumps and bumps in the paint afterwards. Right, I'm sealing all the foam now with PVA, which is obviously white glue, wood glue or whatever. In fact, the one I've got is a big thing of PVA admix adhesive, which is a sealant and so on. So we're going to put that all over the foam, probably about four coats, and then some other stuff before we paint it. So let's talk about how the arms are going to work. I really want arms that have more than one bend in. I was just going to bend the elbows, but I think I want to bend the upper arm as well. So it's going to be made of sections like this. And the green part is going to be printed in nylon. It's fairly thin, so it should be fairly flexible, but I don't want it to wobble too much. And these other round things are going to be in ABS, and those are going to be um, screwed on the bottom. We might bend the nylon with some heat, uh, so we can set it in a particular pose. And then, of course, we'll pull a string through the holes, and that should cause the arm to bend. At least that part compress, and we can bend the green part in or out to make an in or out curve. 
and uh, bend it whichever way we want to and we can put those together to make an elbow and an upper arm joint and just pull it with servos. Here are some of my discs and I think these are going to be the same on the upper and lower arms. Here's my nylon piece, I'm printing it flat on the bed so the countersinks work and also it should be more flexible that way. Alright, and here's one that I made earlier. So this is the nylon off the print bed, which is pretty stiff. But once I've got the leverage angle of these pieces, I think it should be no problem just to get a little bit of bend on there. This is for the upper arm. And of course, I've just heated that nylon up with a hot air gun and bent it wherever I want. And once it's cooled down, it stays there and I can bend that some more or less if I want to. So we've got both arms and we've now got lower arms. So obviously the upper arms bend that way. There'll be a motor pulling a string on the outside and the lower arms bend the other way, so they're almost like elbows that will bend upwards, so we can do both of those at once, of course. It's not very much movement, but I don't want them to be too wobbly. It'd be nice if he could turn his arms right up the other way, but that's going to need far too much torque, I think. Plus, he doesn't really need his arms for anything useful, they're just there for show. So uh, we're going to put some motors in and make some mountings for them on the body, and then we should be just about there. Well, his body's nice and shiny because of all the PVA. I've done about four coats, so the next thing will be Plasti Dip and Primer. But let's just have a look at his arms. So those are going to fit on somewhere there. Obviously, they'll be covered in some cosmetic, probably fabric or something. So somewhere about a pose like that, just slightly forwards, I think. So there we go. They're going to be a bit wobbly, but if we... Uh, have a motor in that pulls a string tight then uh, when he walks hopefully that won't wobble there and the same on there so there'll be a kind of walking pose that stiffens the arm up so that should be all right so I need a bracket at the top but before I stick those on I'm going to get the rest of the body primed and the products for that are Plasti Dip which is a spray on rubber which I'm going to spray straight on the PVA comes in various colours this is grey you can get clear as well it's incredibly toxic. Do it outside or in a well-ventilated area and wear a respirator, a proper one, not a dust mask, one with actual filters. On top of that, I'm going to use automotive primer and I'm not sure if Bender's going to be silver or what colour, but this is basically grey primer and there's lots of top coat that matches the paint range. Well, that's all the paint on. That's Plasti Dip and Primer, so he looks pretty good. I need to sand his head down and paint that as well, but um, he definitely looks like Bender from Futurama, so now it's time to stick his arms on. I've got one servo fitted in this arm which uh, pulls a pulley and pulls up the outside there so I just need to put another one in at the other stage to pull this up. Now I could put both pulleys at the top and have them uh, pulling down but obviously um, as this pulls and as this pulls uh, basically if I run the string all the way down here then these pieces get shorter as well as this pulls so that means the string would go slack that's supposed to pull this. So I could have a Bowden tube but I'd still have some slack to deal with so I'd need a big loop at the end or something. So probably the best thing to do is just put the servo here and it also gives it a bit more mass as well because they're metal gear servos so this will uh, pull this apart which means the arm will wobble less so i think that's probably the best thing to do is just put the second servo here to pull up the forearm so i've got both servos fitted in each arm now and those strings fitted and i've also got these wedges attached and you'll notice probably they've got little holes in which um, allow me to zip tie those to the frame so now I can mount the arms at the right angle. So I just need to put some servo extension leads in for these and we can fit the arms onto Bender. So I fix those arms onto the chassis. So obviously the arm can lift right out and the wrist uh, stroke lower arm can bend there. So we do need to put the hand on, which will make it a bit longer. It's not much movement, but it will do for effect. So let's look at some electronics. Right, so what have we got? We've got an Arduino Pro Mini, which is going to be a servo controller, similar to what I did with the head last time. And we've got two power supplies here for the servos. So the servos are pretty high torque ones to pull those arms up and down. So these are five amp battery emulator circuits, um, which will be basically be a power regulator from a LiPo that powers the robot. So I've got breakout cables that go to the servos. And each one of those, of course, has two connectors. So there's two servos in each arm and these wires should be long enough to reach. So I just need to pop that in and pop some code on it. So just running through a sequence there of the arms bending and the wrists bending. I think the wrists are probably too far low down the arms, so they might get modified in the future. But essentially, the principle works. The motors are strong enough. So it's possible this uh, part of the arm might get modified in the future because I think that elbow is not really where the elbow should be. It's more like a wrist that bends in a weird place. So maybe I take a section out of the upper arm and move the uh, shim essentially that joins the two sections up a piece, cut the nylon shorter so his elbow's further up and then just have a slightly longer 
sort of forearm wrist where the hand eventually goes on. But I'm going to be putting sleeves on next time and making the hands. So we'll deal with that then. So there he is all together. He's just running through the uh, default sequence, both the head and the arms there. Eventually it will be radio controlled, so we'll sync up sounds and he'll do something with his head and his arms will do something. At the moment it's just running through a loop to show you the full movement of all of the pieces. So uh, one of the things we'll do next time is put sounds in and sync those things up so he does a sort of expression that matches the sound. So I'm pretty happy with this so far. I think he's unmistakably Bender. Next time we're going to be working on the rest of the cosmetics. So sanding down and painting the head, dealing with the inside of the eyes here, putting sleeves on the arms and giving him hands, the hinge for the door. And then we're going to sync up the animatronics with sounds. And so those can be radio controlled with the rest of the robot. And of course, we still need to return to those robot legs. I'm still waiting for some proper actuators to come so he can actually walk along. And don't forget to check out the rest of the Robot X series. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects. And you should also check out my Patreon campaign, which is how the majority of these projects are funded. Have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. Also check out my t-shirt store for t-shirts and other merchandise. The links are in the description to this video. All right, that's all for now.